Yes, you know, I just thank God that he is with us and, and that he has moved us right along. You know, we got to keep step with God, don't we? Yes, you know, we got to keep step. It says in Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Yeah. That's right. But where they keep with the law, happy is he. What, they're, what he's saying right there is where, uh, where there is a lack of prophetic vision, where there is no direction, privately in your own life or even in a church body, in a congregation, you're going to dwindle down if you don't have a vision. You got to have a vision. And you got to be moving forward with your vision. Now, some vision, I tell you what, if you got a vision, and I've told my mother a long time ago I had a vision for my life. My mother was all on board. She's like, I believe it. Now, there was a whole lot of people who didn't believe it. And some people won't believe your vision. And, and people, you know, just, you know, they just won't get on board with it right. until you're successful with it. And then they want to get on board with it, and they're like, oh, oh I like it, man, that's good. You know, just because you've got a vision don't mean, and it's from the Lord doesn't mean somebody's going to come up and pat you on the back and say, oh, that's good right there. I, I believe that too. That's true. That's true. That's just the way it is. Sometimes you've got to walk out that vision on your own for a little right. bit, and the Lord gets in behind you, and he starts confirming that vision in your life with his signs and wonders and his Holy Spirit moving and, and people getting around you saying, ah, I've been ministered to, then they'll start saying, oh, I believe in that vision you've got right there. Yes. So we got to know the vision. And I like how the message says that. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. Mm -hmm. Now that's the message about, you know, what the, what the King James was just saying, where there is no vision, the people perish. Well, the message says where people can't see what God's doing, they stumble all over themselves. That's true. And if a good pastor will let, let, the, let the sheep and let the people know the best he can what God is doing, what he feels like God is doing in the church body, and what he, what he feels like, you know, the God is moving with us in this. We've got to know that there's a step after the one we just took. That's right. Yes. Amen. Amen. There's another Amen. step of faith. That's right. There's another step of faith for us. Uh, individually, uh, as just people of God, there's another step for us. And as a, and, and as a, a corporate body here for a New Life of Rocky Mount, there's another step for us. Yes. You know, sometimes we get stuck between steps. You know, we do. We can get stuck between two steps in our life. Uh, man, it's like getting stuck in the third grade, man, and here you are at 18 and you're in the third grade. <laughs> you're like, man, I done got stuck somewhere. <laughs> you know, and you got a lot of frustration going on in your life. It's because you done forgot to take another step. Yeah. Now, every step we take has got to be of the Lord, and it takes faith to take step. It takes a step, you know. We can say, oh, man, I had so much faith back in the day, or I have faith for this in my life, but it's another thing to have faith to take another step in your life. Yes. Because a lot of times when you take another step in your life, you don't have any guarantees other than his word saying, I'm going to be there for you on the other end of this. Whenever you take that step out there and everybody's looking at you like you're crazy and you're taking a step for God and you're saying, Lord, I believe what I'm hearing in my heart is of you. And you take a step, that right there takes guts. It takes guts Amen. in the Lord to take that step. you got to take that step confidently in the Lord. Because there's a lot of people that had good vision and the Lord's hand was on their life. But because they were not willing to take that next step in their life, their fruition, the fruition of their ministry was diminished because of fear. Because they weren't ready to take the next step. You've got to be willing to follow the prophetic step of the Lord. Whenever he says, hey, I want you to follow me, and we follow him to a certain place in our life, and we just follow him. Oh, Lord God, this place is good. Oh, I like this place, Lord. It is a beautiful place. Thank you, Lord. You just give him just a few minutes, spiritually speaking, and he's going to say, it's not time. It's time to take another step. Oh, Lord, I thought I had arrived. Man, this has been good. I want to stay right here. You know, come on now. We've been in some places where it was thick in the Lord. And you want to stay right where you're at with the Lord. Like, I want to stay right here. You give the shepherd just a little bit of time, the shepherding of the Holy Spirit, and you will become uncomfortable in that place because he's moved on. Amen. He has moved on. Amen. And we got to go and catch up with him. And it takes faith to go and catch up with him because we've got to let go of what we got to grab on to what he has. Right. Amen. Say it to yourself. I've got to let go of what i got. To grab on to what he has. And I'd rather have what he has than what I've got. 
And I love where I'm at in the Lord, man, but I tell you what, we're going to move on with it too. Right. Well, there's another step in new life for Rocky Mount, I promise you that. Amen. One thing's we we gotta have a bigger parking lot. Yes. Yes. Amen. Come on, it's tight out there. Yes. I was out there directing traffic here to pastors. I'm like, <laughs> can we get some flags out there, man? <laughs> Help some people, you know, because it's tight. And we need a little. We need to be able to open that up, man. We need some help. I tell you what, it ain't taking God by surprise at all. No. This thing right here ain't taking God by surprise at all. We just have to be willing to take another step. Man, good. Oh, the Lord is with us. Yeah. See, we we got to walk in faith now. Yes. Let's turn in our Bibles. I mean, can you hear me today? Yes. Yes. Man, I'm going to get up here a little bit more. Come on now, Luke. We're looking at John, chapter John, uh, the book of John, chapter 6, 4 through 14. And the people on the Internet, we really appreciate you joining us today. Oh, I've been hearing all through the week, man, how much they enjoyed last week. I mean, we've had like 500 views of last week's service. I'm telling you what, they are around watching us. I don't know how many people are there now, but I'll tell you, they see they feel the Holy Spirit, you know, as they're watching it on the internet. I tell you, let, let, let them be touched by it in the name of Jesus. All right, we're in verse 4. Everybody with me? Yes. Can I get an amen? amen? If you ain't got your Bible, some of these younger folk, they're out of here now, but they got their, oh yeah, man, they got their phones out and they got everything. I got on my girl one time. I was watching her across the way. And I was in a night. I was in a big congregation. I was watching her over there. And she was over there just on. And I was like, that girl's up on her phone in the middle of service. Right. I wanted to jump all over her. Woo. I went over there, man, after a service. I was like, what you doing? She said, I was taking notes. That was a good sermon. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> I had to let go of that quick because that's a different generation guys I mean she was in the word and taking notes and she showed me in the page of notes I was like oh no Lord forgive me I was ready to Woo. you know what I mean I had it all in me like what she was doing you know what and what she was doing Hey, we can get like that in the church. That's a preach right there. Yeah. Because we may think we know what somebody's doing. Come on, Pastor. And we don't even know what they're doing. Yeah. Because we're looking at them, and they may be of a different generation or a different gifting, and all of a sudden, man, they say, I ain't doing that at all. Yeah. You got me wrong. That's true. You got me wrong. And I tell you what, sometimes when we get wrong, I looked at my girl, and I was like, forgive me. That right there was wrong. I had already, I had already grounded you. I already grabbed that. In my mind's eye, I already grabbed that phone out of your hand. And put it up on a shelf. Oh, yes, I did. And I had already said, and I was already pleased with my way I was going to do it. I was pleased with my actions. And I had to say I was wrong. Come on, sometimes, guys, we get pleased with ourselves. Because we think we know what's going on. We ain't know what's going on. Well, we like to be in the know, but sometimes God won't let us in the know. Sometimes God won't let us in the know. Well, we think he does. But come on, his plans are bigger and deeper and wider. Oh, yeah. yeah. He gives us our part sometimes, but he don't let us know it all. That's Amen. right. And come on, man. Amen. Now, let me get to the scriptures. Now, the Passover of the feast of the Jews was nigh or near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said, Philip, where shall we buy bread in these, that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. <coughs> Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient to feed these people, that everyone should have a little bit to eat. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there's a lad. Now that ain't a term we use a lot today. He said, here's a boy here. Yes. Here's a boy, or here's a young man that has his lunch with him. He's got five barley loaves and two small fish. But how, what could this do amongst so many people? Now, I tell you what, man, if I was up in amongst a bunch of people, you know, and I brought my lunch and they didn't, and they trying to take mine, I'd be saying, what are you trying to do take my lunch? Come on now, you better have some authority to come and take my lunch. Because where I'm coming from, they call that a bully. <laughs> There be some spiritual bullies sometimes, man. Come on now. I could preach on that all day long. Some people want to come and take your lunch. Some people want to come and take your blessing. Some people want to come and take stuff. 
and they want to come and bully you in and say, oh, this is mine. This is mine. It ain't nothing yours. You better have the authority of the Lord whenever you go up and say, I want your lunch. I want what you have in your hands. So here this man, come on now, help me, follow me. Here, guys. So this guy came up and, and you know this guy was probably just over holding his lunch. And they were looking over at him and talking to Jesus like, uh-huh. We can take that. <laughs> that guy can't do nothing, man. It's, you know, we just take his lunch. We've been grabbing on to it. Well, here's what Jesus said, you know. and He said, uh, I know one thing in my life. Jesus never took anything from me unless I said, yes, you can have it. So that little boy had to say, yes, Lord, and you can have this. Because God never takes anything unless we allow him to. That's right. I mean, even if we say, oh, man, that's my only thing I got to eat today. You know, I'm hungry, Lord. I can't help these fools didn't bring nothing to eat. <laughs> Come on. Can you put yourself in a situation? I can't, you know, this little boy just showed him up. So here he is, and he's got his lunch. And I know in my heart, man, because I've walked with the Lord a few years, that he will not take something out of your hands. Right. He doesn't take the tithe out of your hands. That's right. He doesn't make you tithe. Right. He opens the opportunity for you to do it. and you be, It's up to you if you want to do it. It's up to you if you want to be blessed. That's right. Man. Now, whatever the, Jesus said we got to need here, that little boy had something in his hands, and he had to willingly from his heart let it go. That's the way our God works. Yeah. He didn't say, come here, boy. Hey, hey, Peter, you're rough. Go over and snatch that from that boy right there and bring it over here to me. That ain't the way our God works. Amen. So he says, hey, that little boy over there, he's got some small fish. Then Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now, I know, you know, it doesn't say in the Scriptures, can you see Jesus over there talking to that little boy? You mind giving that up? <laughs> the boy looks at Jesus saying, uh, what you going to do? <laughs> And he's got these people set down. He's got these people set down. And he said, Jesus said, set them down in the number of 5,000 and distribute them. This, these barley loaves. He started breaking them and blessing them. And man, that was 5,000 people there. You know how many? 5,000 people is a lot of people. You know, I've been in a few churches with 5,000 people. I've been in a few where it had eight or nine or ten. But I'll tell you what, that's a whole lot of folk. You got somebody's lunch down there and you're trying to bless them with somebody's little boy's lunch. You better have some power in your life. So here he is. He said, okay, Lord, I'm willing to give you everything I've got. I don't have anything, Lord. I brought me a couple of fish and a couple of loaves of bread, and I'm willing to give you all i got. And Jesus says, that's enough. That's enough. If you're willing to give me all that you've got, that right there is enough. Because if you're willing to give me what you have, I will multiply it. Oh, I'll multiply what you give me in the Lord. And you see here, the little boy didn't say, oh, I'll give you one of mine, I'll give you one. Jesus, you're a pretty good guy. I'll give you half of mine. I'll give you half of my fish and half of my bread. No, he said, you can have it all. Oh. Take it all. Yeah. Lord. I mean, sometimes man, we want God's blessings on something of multiplication, but we ain't willing to give it all. Right. Oh. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> we want to know and say, Lord, why ain't I being blessed? And the Lord says, what would what, what, you give me to bless you with? Mm -hmm. you, you gave me a half a servant? Mm -hmm. Or did right. you give me what was in your hands? Mm -hmm. you. So here they were, you know, and he says, sit them down. And he distributed the, the, the brick fish out to his disciples. Can you just see him breaking it and blessing it and breaking it? And they were sitting down, and, and they said that in verse 12, so they went and they filled... You know, after the people ate all that they want, they filled up on the, the fragments that were remained, so none were lost. Therefore, they gathered, gathered up and filled 12 baskets with fragments of five barley loaves which were left over that the people hadn't eaten. Wow. Oh, man, when Jesus puts his hand to something, oh, man, you better get ready. You better get your baskets out. Jesus says, go get some empty baskets. What do we need empty baskets for, Lord? Because I'm getting ready to multiply. I'm getting ready to touch something. Oh, yeah, you see those two little fish and a couple barley loaves? I'm getting ready to touch that right there. And you're going to need something to gather the blessing in. Amen. See, sometimes God wants to bless us, and we ain't got nothing to gather the blessing in. Oh, come on now. He said 12 baskets. Where did they go get those 12 baskets at? You better go get your 12 baskets before God starts to move. Because whenever he starts to move, you're going to have it all over the ground. Amen. And the Lord ain't about waste. Right. Oh, man, I tell you what, God ain't about no waste. So here they had it, you know, come on. I can just see it in my mind's eye, man. They're over here, 
and they got these 12, they got these, these empty baskets, and there ain't nothing to put in them. And you got to walk by faith sometimes. I don't know how they got those 12 baskets, guys. I really don't. They were out on a hillside. But God says, I need those 12 baskets there because I'm getting ready to touch something. I tell you what, man, when we get ready to let God to have it all in our life, you're setting yourself up for a miracle. Right. You're getting, so you're setting yourself up for God to move in your life in a way that is powerful. You see, the little boy didn't say, I'm giving you just two fish. See, that won't work with the Lord. Because we can't have no plan B's with the Lord. Because plan B's is like saying, Lord God, I'll trust you. But if you don't come through, I've got another plan here. Come on now. We've got to trust him. We gotta believe in him. Is anybody catching what I'm saying today? Yeah. Yeah. So they have all these then all this bread left over. And what they did with that bread, I guarantee they went and fed the poor. They went out and blessed some people. Oh man, I, I just man, I wish I'd have had a hunk of that bread. Oh man, if human humanity had a hunk of that bread today, they'd have put it on a shrine and put it up somewhere so somebody could see it over at the Vatican or whatever. I'm telling you that this was a miracle. It's a beautiful miracle, wasn't it? Are we putting ourselves in line for God to bring multiplication to us individually and corporately here at New Life? Are we, are we getting ready for multiplication? See, God in his word says, I added to your church. You see, in the book of Acts, he said, I, he added daily to who would believe. He added daily. And later on in Acts, he said, he multiplied the believers. Yes. Where are they going to go, Lord? If you start adding, Lord God, and we got a problem with it, what's going to happen if we multiply, Lord? What are we going to do, Father God? Go out the side door down here and into the parking lot. It is cold, Father God. What are we going to do? Because I tell you what, when we get in line for a blessing, we need to expect it. Yes. If we believe God that He's going to do a thing, we need to expect that to come to pass. I don't have a small vision. Some people may say, well, you know, we're blessed right where we're at. Yes, we're blessed right where we're at. My Lord is walking on. And I'm listening to him as he's walking, and he says, follow me. Don't you worry about those that follow me. Well, don't you remember what he used to tell Peter that? He told Peter that on. He said, don't you worry about that. Follow me. And we need to follow him, guys. And as we follow him, we'll walk ourselves right up into a blessing. We'll walk ourselves right up into a blessing. Is anybody getting this? Because I tell you what, I've walked with the Lord for 30-some years now, and whenever I've been serious about that walk, man, it's always stretched me. It's always, the Lord's always asked me to do something that I wasn't really willing to do. Not in my, not right in here, you know, I was like, nope, I ain't going to do it. <laughs> Give me those two fish and those barley loaves, Tim. Nope, I ain't going to do it. I'm hungry, Lord. And we can be hungry for a lot of stuff, guys. We can be hungry for a lot of things in our life, you know. We can be hungry for a move of God. We can be hungry for, you know, just being used of the Lord. We can be hungry for many things in the Lord. And the Lord says, what you're hungry for, I want you to give it up. Give me that wholeheartedly. Place it in my hands and I'll multiply it back to you. But you've got to trust me to bring it back to you. That little boy was hungry that day or he wouldn't have brought a lunch. He was ready to get hungry. Some of us are hungry in the Lord for a move of God. Yes. Amen. We want to be hungry. We say, Lord, i got a hunger in my heart and I know exactly how you're going to do it. Yeah. And the Lord says, I want you to sacrifice that, what you think you know, and put it in my hands and I'll multiply it back to you. Amen. Amen. I just know, man, if, if, the, if you've got the Lord's blessing and he multiplies a thing, you better have 12 baskets laying around waiting on it. If he blesses this congregation, you think this little room right here is going to hold this congregation? Do you think he's blessing this congregation? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Is our parking lot out there sufficient for us guys? No. People, man, are out there trying to just park, man, and they're just, I mean, it's just that tight, you know? we got to get ourselves ready. For God's blessings. Yes. Increase. 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 Come on. Somebody say it. Increase, Lord. Increase, Increase Lord. Yeah. Oh, I pray, Lord, add to your church. Build your church. Bring the people that need to come, Lord God, in those doors. 
Add to your church, Father God. You know what we're about. We love you, Jesus, and we want to celebrate your presence, Lord. We want you to go around touching people, Lord. Oh, I know when Jesus starts to touch people, people want to get in around that. They want to be around Jesus touching people because I know what the touch does. Oh, the touch sets you free. See, the touch will heal you up. Oh, he'll fill you with the Holy Spirit. You see, the touch is powerful and it's contagious and people want to be around that. Do you think this little room is going to be sufficient for us? Come on, guys. Because I know the anointing that lies upon this congregation. Yes. The Lord is with us. And He knows our hunger, but He's asking us, Will you trust me with another step? Will you trust me? The thing about us trusting Him, the proof's in the pudding, guys. He says, man, if you're trusting me with everything before, it'll show in your life. <laughs> and if you haven't trusted me with everything before, it'll show in your life. And the Lord's trying to set us up for a blessing. And you know, if you have a blessing in your life, the people around you get blessed. Amen. They do. They get blessed. They get blessed. And so if we are blessed as a congregation, you're blessed as individuals. Oh, man, come on now. I want to be around a blessed church. I don't want to be around an old familiar church that don't have no blessings going on. You go in and you leave the same way you went in. You're like, I ain't felt no Holy Spirit in that place. I haven't been blessed and my children aren't getting saved. I'm not getting delivered. Something's wrong. And I tell you what, we need to have a move of God. We want a move of God. And you get a move of God going on, you're going to have to make room. Where's your 12 baskets? We need to have 12 baskets, guys. We need to have them. Ooh, God's good. You know something about people that give all that they have? Like that little boy gave all that he had, didn't he? He gave everything to Jesus. He gave it all to him. And if Jesus didn't come through, he'd have been sitting there hungry with the rest of them. Yes. With the attitude. Yes. <laughs> oh, man, I'm going to kick that guy right there. He done took my lunch. Come on, you can. Have you ever? Had, my, my little girl calls it a hangry. I never even heard of it, hangry. You're hungry and angry at the same time. I was like, that's one negative to be hungry. But if you're angry too, you're hangry. And I was like, man, well, that's terrible right there. So if God didn't move, they'd have been hangry right there, you know what I mean? But God moved. And there's something about somebody who's willing to go all the way with the Lord. All the way. Say all the way. All the way. No plan B. Come on, guys. We can't have no plan B. Because <laughs> plan Bs, I mean, in the natural, they may be pretty smart. But when you're dealing with the Lord, you know you're dealing with the Lord, not just a man or just a situation, but you know it's the Lord. Yeah. You better not have no plan B in your pocket. Because he'll call you, honey. Yeah. I mean, you think you got this all figured out? <laughs> got you. <laughs> come on now. We can't outfigure God. No. We know, you know, come on. So here it is. Are y'all still with me? Yeah. Yes. I know a lady, I don't know her personally, but I've watched her on TV that gave it all. Now, this lady was just beautiful to watch. And I looked at her, and it was on a 2012 Olympics. And her name was Gabby Douglas. Y'all know who I'm talking about? Gabby Douglas. Some of you may know, and some of you may not know. Gabby Douglas was born in Virginia. And they actually called her the flying squirrel. This girl was not no bigger than this right here when she was standing up there getting gold. And I was like, how did she get up on that podium? Lord God, how did she get up there being that young? And you know, he, he said he, she gave it all. She was willing to give it all to get where she wanted to go. Really where she felt her call was in the Lord. She said, I got a gift. I've got a gift. And people were saying in her life at age six, you got a gift. And she was willing to do whatever it took to see that gift matured. Yes. So here it is a little bit about her. I'm just going to read a little bit about her. <laughs> Douglas is the first African-American or the first African-American from any descent of any nationality in the Olympic history to become the individual all-around champion. She had the individual gold around her neck. And the first U.S. Uh, gymnast to win gold in both individual and team competitions at the same Olympics. Oh, God. Gabby Douglas was also the 2016 AT&T American Cup all-around champion. Now, this girl was in her teenage years. And I'm saying, Lord God, how did she get there in teenage years? In my teenage years, I was trying to put bicycles together. Come on, I was riding skateboards down hills. 
I was out there doing something, following my desires, you know, just going out and doing things. I tell you what, man, sometimes you've got to be willing to give it your all. Because if you give it your all, man, I tell you what, God will give you a, a way to be able to prosper in that. So she began training gymnastics at age six. At age eight, she won a level four all-around gymnastics in, in Virginia, here in, in the Virginia State Championships. Now this gets me right here. At age 14, Gabby moved to Des Moines, Iowa to train full-time full -time as a gymnast while her family stayed here in Virginia. At age 14, she says, I'm going to go and I'm going to leave my family, what I'm used to, hear my mama down the hallway, eating those good dinners that she fixes, and I'm willing to go wherever God's calling me to go pretty much. Now, she would laugh now, and I want to get to the good part. She glorifies God. She's a born-again Christian. She knows the Lord now. She's following the Lord's voice in her life. And she says, I'm willing to take that next step. I'm willing to give it my all. Yes. Now, some of us say we gave it our all, but sometimes our all isn't really what God's asking. He's saying, I want you to take another step. And sometimes it's a step out of the familiar. Come on. Oh, come on now, guys. Sometimes it's to leave something yes. and to grab a hold yes. of something else. Oh, it's yes. hard to hold on to what you have yes. and to yes. grab what he's got for you. Come on. Yes. Oh, man, come on. That next step takes guts and faith. Amen. So here's Douglas, man. She goes up there and trains full time while her people are back here in Virginia. And, you know, and, and when Douglas was standing up there, you know, in front of all the nations, you know, of the world on TV, she said, I believe in God. Ooh, she said, I give him all the glory. He is the God that gave me my talent. And he, she said, I am going to glorify his name. Amen. The reason any of us know that Gabby got where she wanted to get in her heart because of that desire. Ooh, is it because she shined at the beginning so well? It isn't because she was something all that was all out there, you know, and she was just so blessed. It was because she was willing to take that step. She was willing to go do something about her gift. How many of us have a gift in here and we're not willing to move on with it? We're not willing to take the next step with it. You see, us as a congregation, we're willing to take a step. Oh, Lord God, let us take a step of faith. But us as a congregation, we take a step of faith. We're expecting you to take a step of faith as well. We're expecting you saying, Lord God, I'm willing to take another step in my personal walk to where I can go and do what you're asking me to do. Oh, man, some people, man, they don't want to go to school. They hate it because it's not familiar to them. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I know how that is. Not everybody's called to go to school. Mm -hmm. Man, we have beautiful pastors that weren't called to go to school. Now, I understand that, but some people are called. Mm -hmm. Some people are called to get under there and go listen to a professor and learn what they're doing. The thing of it is, is to most of us, it's not comfortable. Oh, man, we get out there and we're saying, Oh, Lord, please don't ask me to go. I remember when I was in Bible college, the only thing I was asking the Lord, oh, Lord, thank you that I'm here, but please don't call me to China. <laughs> so I ain't trying to go to China, Lord. <laughs> and please don't send me to the Philippines, Lord. I had a list, Lord. Because I, you know, I was just thinking, I was single at the time, and if he's going to send me to China, that would have been a rough situation. I didn't want to marry no China. You know, I didn't want to marry into no family over there. You got to think what my, was going through my mind. And it does go through our mind. Oh, Lord, if I give you the next step of my life, where will I end up? Oh, Lord God, will I end up really, Lord God? And the Lord says, you will be blessed. I will make a way for you to be blessed. Just like Gabby Douglas, if you're willing to really do what I'm asking you to do, I will bless you. Oh, I'll multiply you. Oh, don't give him a plan B or half of what you've got. Give it all to him, and he will multiply your ministry back to you. He will multiply what you have in your hands. He'll multiply your life, and your giftings will multiply back to you if you've given him your all. Amen. Amen. Just like that boy, little boy gave him his all, he got it all back. You know that boy got to see a miracle. He got to see his little lows yeah. multiplied in front of him. For the next hour, he said, oh, that's my bread right there, but I gave it to the Lord. Now look at it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, when Jesus puts his hand on something, get ready. Amen. You got to get ready, guys, whenever Jesus puts his hand on something. But I promise you, it's not easy getting in that position to where you want to see God multiply something back in your life. How many of you really have something in your life you say, I'd like to have it multiplied? Mm -hmm. You know, hey, come on now, just be honest here. You know, I... In my own life, it ain't money. Mm -mm. Now, I, I thank God for, you know, sustenance. Mm -hmm. 
but it's not that's not really if God multiplies what's in my heart I won't have no need for it <laughs> you know what I'm saying if you really have if you get multiplied the right thing in your life you'll get it all <laughs> you know what I'm saying if you get the right things if you ask just for something then you may get that something but you're really not getting multiplied the way you should so here I am I'm like Lord multiply this multiply this Lord God for your kingdom's sake not even my sake, for your kingdom's sake. And whenever God does that, if you ask wisely to multiply something, you give him your all, you're multiplying the right thing. Do you hear what I'm saying? Here's, here's Solomon. Solomon was there, and he was getting ready to rule the kingdoms. He, was a, he just said, Lord, give me wisdom. He said, because you asked right, I'm going to give you all the other ones too. He said, all the other blessings are yours too because you asked rightly. Sometimes we're not asking rightly. We need to put the right thing out there in God's hands. And when he multiplies it back, then we get it all. Amen. We need the right things multiplied in our life. Is anybody getting this? So don't ask just God for a husband. Ask for other things, and then you won't have no problem getting a husband. You see, we've got to ask the right things in our life. Lord God, touch this. Here's my, here's my uh, barley loaves. Here's my fish, Lord. I'm really pouring it down in your lap. It isn't what you know, the, what I wanted to give. It's what you're asking me to give. When we give what God is asking us to give, get ready for a miracle. Yeah. Oh, what God, what is God asking you to give? Just ask me, what's God asking you to give in your life? Your time. Yeah, oh, that's huge. Of yourself? Yes, yes. That is good. Time? Yeah. Anybody else got anything? What is he asking you? Don't, think, don't tell him what you think he's asking me. What's he asking you? Yeah. I tell you what, he'll multiply it back to you if you hand it to him. Yes. The thing of it is, as we walk with him, we've got to continually hand it to him. Yes. Oh man, we may be on fire for him in one season. He'll come back to me and say, where's your heart? I need it yes. again. Amen. Because now you're getting all out there and you're hurting people or whatever it is, you know what I mean? you got to give me your heart again. Mm -hmm. God is good to us. Amen. You see, man, us sit here at this church. We're getting ready to take a step. <clears throat> we are looking at properties now. We are going to have, a, we're going to move on. We're not going to stay here in this building. We can't stay here. Amen. We can't stay here, guys. This right here, we go to two or three services in here. By Easter, we're in trouble. We are. Uh, I've talked to people about knocking out this wall and bringing everything around this way and start talking to us like this back over. That won't do. It won't do. It may do for a service, but it won't do for two services. You know, we can go to two services, but then we're wearing out everybody. And I'm not saying that we got everything, you know, all lined out right there, but I promise you in the next few weeks that I will be presenting to you, you know, a plan for us to get involved in as a congregation to where we can move forward with it. We are moving forward, guys. We are taking another step with our God. Praise we are not God. going to stay small for being small because God is multiplying us. Get your baskets ready. Get your baskets ready. Because when God puts his hand on something, you've got to get your facility ready. Don't say, oh, Lord, after you do it, I'll go get my facility ready. Well, then, you know, I tell you what, then it's all over the ground. You better get your stuff ready as he's doing it. As he's speaking, you better be running. As he's saying, bring me that right there. You better get running because he's moving. And when he moves, it's always in the miraculous. He always moves, and it's always a blessing to people. Amen. It always is. So whenever he moves, don't think it's just for service. When it gets thick, don't think it's just for service. It is for his kingdom. We're here to. I tell you what, I want to see Rocky Mount just overturned in the name of Jesus. There's people hungry for the kingdom. There's people hungry to be set free. It ain't about religion. It ain't about just getting and having a religious experience. It's about the kingdom and allowing God to move in their life. Yes. People need it and they're just hungry for it. Can I get an amen? amen? They really need it. Amen. I want to give them what I got. I want to give them you know, what I received. And what I received was a Holy Spirit experience. Oh, it was Holy Spirit and I had the Holy Spirit. He came and He birthed inside of me dreams. He brought me up out of the pit. He grabbed me by the hand and took me in. I tell you what, I know what it is to be took by the hand and be lifted up out of the pit. Oh, I know what it's like, guys. 
Yes. And you see, there's a whole lot of people around Rocky Mountain that needs yes. to know yes. that. Yes. They need to have the hand of the man from Galilee. And once he grabs that, we need to be around him encouraged him. Don't ever let go. Because he's going to redeem your future. He'll get back to you what the enemy tried to steal away. Oh, see, that's the kind of Jesus I want to bring. Woo! Come on, God. And I tell you what, anybody's welcome up in here. I don't care what they got going on in their life, they're welcome up in here. And I tell you what, if they don't want to conform. <laughs> Let the Holy Spirit deal with them because He'll turn up the fire. Yes. I tell you well, when something was wrong in my life, the Lord made me feel really uncomfortable about it. I was like, oh, Jesus, I'm getting ready to run up out of here. But I didn't. And I got set free. Have you ever been around and felt the fire, man? You're just like, oh, no, my heart's beating hard. And I can't hardly stand it up in here today, Lord. It's because the Lord's trying to set you free of something. Oh, you got a battle going on. and So you got one, one foot over into the world and another foot over into the kingdom. And you're sitting right there half and half. And I tell you what, sometimes that sets you up for a battle. <laughs> and you go up into the house of God, <laughs> and the devil's trying to grab a hold of you, and them two are battling over you. Oh, you know, come on now. I felt the battle before. I hate that, guys. I hate that battle, but I'm glad it's going on. It's showing you that you're in the right place because the Lord is working on you. He's moving in your life. Have you ever felt that uncomfortableness in your life? Well, you say, oh, Lord, I'm uncomfortable in your presence. Well, there's a couple of reasons for that right there. Sometimes it's just trying to get you cleaned up. It's like you've got to get rid of that in your life. You know you've got to get rid of it. Who's taking your money? Yes, oh man, it's taking your heart. It's taking your vision off of me. Yes. Mm, come on now. You gotta get rid of it sometimes. Yes. Can I get an amen, sister? Amen. Amen. Ooh, now I'm talking to people now. You you're saying, ouch, my feet, my feet, Lord. I tell you what, anytime that anointing moves, you're gonna get stepped on. Yes, sir. You may as well get used to it. Yes. You're gonna be up around God's people, man. You may as well get used to it. I'll tell you what, man, I would just start wearing what is that? Those work boots, man. Steel toe shoes. shoes, yes, sir. You get around God's people, you better have some tough toes, man. Because you can't get offended. You better not get offended. Because you can get offended and say, I ain't never coming back anymore. You better put your steel toes on. Well, there's always going to be some reason, isn't there, Walt? Well, there's always some reason. Well, there's this guy right here, and I just want to read you a little bit about this guy that was willing to take the next step. Now, this next step that I'm talking to you about, this church is not up for a vote. And nobody knows really about it. If you want to know about it, you've got to come and talk to me. You know, there's a few people we've talked to about it on the board, and that's it. I'm just letting you know it's a go, and you've got to trust me. Uh, I'm your pastor, and that's just that. You know, God's got his hand on me. I know he does. Thank you, Jesus. He's doing things in our lives. He's doing things in this church. It is beautiful, man. I love a small church. I love where we're at. Yes. I do. I love where we're at, guys. I love being able to see your face, but I love where we're going too. Yes. You see, I love the trip. I love the Sundays that we have as we go. I, I like what's going on right now, but I also like where he's leading us. Yes. Come on, can we get an amen? Ooh, sometimes we just want the destination and we don't want to have anything to do with the trip. The trip is beautiful. The trip is beautiful. He shows up on the trip. He shows up on the trip as we're going somewhere. Well, I thank God that he shows up on the trip. Ooh, if he didn't show up on the trip for the Israelites, they'd have went hungry. Well, he showed up every day for them and gave a manna up in the desert. As they were on their trip, they were not at their destination, they were on their way. And he fed them as he they went. Whoo, come on now. We need to allow God to take us on here. Oh yes. Now in this book, this man was writing here, it's ten steps of personal growth in their life. He said, it's just ten steps of growth. And he says, you know, if, if you really want to see your life grow in you and experience it in your church and individual life, you have to be willing to do a few things. If you don't like where you're at, you have to be willing to do a few things. If you're finding out where you're at is a little too tight for you, it's a little too tight for your gifting, you got to be willing to do a few things. Oh, have you ever got to a place where you're saying, I ain't got nowhere to move, I ain't got nowhere to, I, I got to have a, a release in my life because it's gotten too tight. Then you got to risk the move from the known to the unknown. you got to be willing to risk it. you got to be willing to take a step. My wife and I were willing to take a step out of New Life of Rock, uh, Roanoke and when we came over here to New Life of Rocky Mount. It was not an easy decision. I had friends around me. Some said no. Some said yes. 
Some said, I'll go with you, and they never came. Some people said they'd come, and they're still sitting here today. And I love you guys, and I see you guys. I mean, they came with me. But it still took a step of faith. Yeah. I was walking out of a secure job. I had it made. I, didn't, I mean, seriously, it wasn't anything. They weren't asking anything from me, really, just to be that, use that pastor gift. Use that pastor gift, watch out over people. But as far as stretching and being moved and being uncomfortable, no. They really weren't asking that of me. Just feel this position of a pastor. And I have a call of a pastor on me. I, it wasn't that hard of a job, you know, as, right. in that sense of the word. Right. But I had to give that up to be willing to go to Rocky Mount. And the door shut behind me when I took a step out the door. It wasn't like there was a plan B, guys. Right. There wasn't. He shut the door. My pastor there said, Oop. <laughs> the place is fulfilled. The position's taken care of. The door is shut. We love you. Make a go of it. <laughs> Sometimes it ain't no plan B. That's right. You, if you believe it's God, you better trust it. Yeah, I mean, you've got to take a trust. So you've got to be willing to take the known and, and give it to God and, and, and grab a hold of the unknown. Such a move, however, is threatening. And not all will assume that risk. It is foolishness to think everybody's going to take a step of faith. They can talk about faith. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, they can be good about teaching about faith. They can even know, you know, everything, every scripture about faith. It don't mean they're going to walk by it. Amen. It don't mean that they're going to take a step by it into the unknown. It's okay to continue to do what you're used to, but it's another thing to go into the unknown. When Jesus says, come and follow me into the unknown, that's where the multiplication happens. So, you know, such fear, man, I tell you what, such fear of the unknown really uh, varies people's visions in their life. It, it, you know, there's magnificent visions. People have an anointing on their life, and because they're not willing to take a step into the unknown, oh, well, they'll act like they got offended, but that ain't it. <laughs> they'll act like, oh, Lord, I ain't going to do that because of such and such. That ain't it either. Usually what we are is we're afraid. Mm -hmm. Fear. 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 Of whatever, letting go of what we know. That's true. How we're, we've been doing it. Oh man, letting go of the small. Mm -hmm. We've got to be willing to let go of the small in our life to walk into what God has for us. Amen. When we walk with God, it should not be small. Right. We, we serve a big God. Yes. And we should expect big yes. things from yes, Him. We do. Yes. And I don't expect big things from Him in my own backyard. We have to be willing to expect big things from Him wherever He leads us. Amen. Wherever he asks us to go. Amen. Come on now, guys. We got to be willing to go there. Don't we, guys? Yes, Don't we have to be willing to take a step sometimes? Yes, right. yes. Oh man, he worked on me five years before I was willing to go to Bible college. I'm glad he's patient. He's full of grace. I'm serious. I quit school at a young age and I said, I ain't going back. And I mean I didn't under I didn't understand decision making a lot in my younger years, but that's one of them I meant. <laughs> He worked on me five years before I went back. It was the best move I ever made in my life. It was the best move in my life that I made because all of a sudden I broke free. I was around people that weren't like me. I was around people that would test me and try me and my beliefs. You know, they believed the same, the same things, but they would get with me. And some of them had more gifting than what I had, had more anointing than what I had, had visions and dreams. They were Holy Spirit people, and I got to mix in with them. I know people around the world because I went to college. And I ain't preaching to anybody. I'm just saying that next step for me at that time was Bible college. It was college. It was getting an education. And it was scary for me to do that because I quit school. And God was saying, now you got to go back. Don't ever quit halfway through, guys, because God will bring you back to it. Well, now I got a master's degree, and that was a whole lot. It was a whole lot of me backtracking what I had started when I started saying I quit. Mm -hmm. You can't say you're going to quit. That's just no way to do that. Yes. Going on with the story, and considering whether the risk will work for others, the authors include this, the story. And follow me, guys. Jump. Go ahead and jump. The words flew upward from the boys and girls, some 60 feet below. High above, I clutched a bar of a tra trapeze swinging back and forth in the great arcs. At the apex of each swing, an empty trapeze bar came temptingly close. Jump! Go ahead and jump. These people from below were telling this guy to jump. How did I get into such a predicament? 
This guy flying back and forth above his crowd. A fine group of talented teens had formed a youth circus. They presented a varied and unique program of, of tumbling, juggling, and, and the trampoline, and doing all that, all with humor, costumes, and equipment. The suspense filled climax to the performance was the high trapeze, where performers flipped, twirled, and twisted in an, an arrow, and the arrow, you know, extravaganza, which brought gasp and delight from the audiences down below. Oh man, they got up on their feet and they were applauding, you know, whenever these people would do this. I tell you what, man, it is a beautiful thing to be in your gifting. The talented group formed a cast for a film and they were producing this thing called The Circus. One afternoon, while I waited for a photographer, one of the youth turned to me and pointed to a high trapeze. He pointed, and this guy was just hanging out, and he pointed to it. He said, why don't you give it a try? I quickly changed the conversation. <laughs> I would have too. But other youths heard the challenge, and you know how youths are. They joined in the grow growing uh, course. They said, try it, try it. I and the large safety net below, I said, I cautiously said, okay, I'll give it a try. You know, can you imagine <laughs> facing your fear? I hate heights. I do not like heights, guys. And it hasn't always been that way, but I get up there, man, I'm going <laughs> just start to sway a little bit. I don't think anything else is swaying, but I'm swaying. <laughs> I'm like, it's dangerous being up here, guys. He's sure-footed, man. I was, anyway, so this guy gets up there, and he said, very slowly, he starts taking off, and he starts climbing the ladder, rope ladder, 20 feet, 30 feet. 35 feet, 40 feet. Oh, and then he said 40,000 feet in his mind. He's like, I'm 40,000 feet up. 50,000 feet. That's what was going on in his mind because he was like, I'm, I'm beyond my fear. I am be above where my comfort zone is. Oh, God will ask you to go above your comfort zone. I promise you he will ask you to get out of your comfort zone. If you want to move on, if you want to take a step, you've got to move out of your comfort zone. Finally, this guy crawled out onto the minuscule platform and seemed a mile above those assembled crowds. I looked down, and the once large safety net looked very unbelievably small portions. <laughs> a slight breeze caused the platform to sway. Oh, no, I'd have been swaying, and the platform would have been swaying. I'd have probably came down off of that thing. You hear me? Hmm. Man, I do not like heights. I already told you I did not. And they said, go ahead. You can do this. Man, come on now. It's always easy for somebody to say that once they've already done it. You know, go ahead. You could do this. Oh, I remember the first time I went off the Rebel Yell, man, up in King's Dominion. I was just a kid. <laughs> go ahead, you could do it. I was like, Whoa. I think I cried that first time. <laughs> After you do it one time, you got it. But that first time, man, I tell you what, that's rough. So they say, go ahead. Take the trapeze bar in your hands and get on. And he said he was shaking and I was preparing to jump across in my platform where the youth was ready to send forth an empty trapeze uh, bar. So he's throwing this out so the guy could catch it. Mustering up my courage, I cried, go, and went swinging out in the space. That guy's got some guts. Mm. Flying through the air, I made three important discoveries. <laughs> that is a hard time to find out something. But I tell you what, whenever you take a step of faith, you will find out things about yourself. Oh, Lord, why you got to stop now and teach me? Why couldn't you have taught me what it before I took a step? He said, first, you can't hold on to one bar and grasp the other. Because fear will make you want to grab on to what you got. You must first let go of both hands and leap. That is a, excuse the language, a heck of a time to be telling me and she's going over a lesson with me way up in the air like that, you know, but we learn as we go. Second, it's frightening and threatening to let go of your security. That's true. I want to stop here just for a second before I get to the third point. I knew a man, that, and I'm just throwing this out here, I'm just, and let God be God and I knew a man that it was a, and he actually came out of the same area I did up in Augusta County. And he was a couple of years ahead of me in Bible college. You know what this man did? Crazy stuff. Following the Lord, crazy. Picked up his whole family. They quit their jobs. They moved, he moved his whole family, kids and everything, to Bible college. And they both went through Bible college together, and they both went out into the ministry. 
I'm talking about God grabbed a hold of them, turned everything around, and shot them out into the ministry. That right there is a step of faith. I've been around those type of people. Ain't too many people can use an excuse of me and say it's valid. When God says to do something, you better get up and start doing it because you're not going to be happy where you're at. That's right. And you'll make everybody else unhappy too until you're willing to take a step. The third thing, the third thing, you don't have forever to make up your mind. Because that man was out there swinging on that thing. You may have one or two swings and you're going to miss an opportunity. And, and then you're going to drop. Come on now. You ain't got forever to make up your mind. You get out there swinging in the middle of a promise, man. You better, you better be willing to go on through with it. Because the momentum will get, leave you hanging in the middle of the air. Yes. We got to keep the momentum coming and going. Is anybody getting something out of this? Yes. Yes. Jump. Go ahead and jump. The guy says, I done learned my lesson. I'm ready to take a jump. Because he done got a three-point lesson up there swinging in the middle of the air. Flying through the air, I reached out and grasped the bar with my fingers. He said, when I went swinging to the other side and they pulled me up on the platform, and then I got an applause and heard everybody down below. Woo! Just cheering and praising, you know, just, oh, man, it's great. And he says, I took my leap of faith. He says, man, what is your leap of faith? You see, we got a lot of stuff going on, but we got a next leap of faith. I know what the next leap of faith for us as a congregation is. We're stepping up out of this room. One way or another, I don't know exactly where it's going to be at, but we are stepping up out of here. God has more for us than what we see around us. I've told you this from the very beginning. God has more for us than what we see. We was over at the YMCA and there's a handful of us. God's got more. And we came up in here and God's adding to us. God's got more, guys. And God's going to move us on. And I'm telling you, we're blessed. We're anointed. We're on purpose. We're, we're here for a time. And God is using us. And if you can't follow me, guys, and this is all, and I mean this from all my heart, and humility here, guys, and humility. And y'all know, if anybody of y'all know me, you can come to me and chat with me. You can't follow me as your pastor if you can't trust me. You, you know, just coming and sitting in here on Sunday morning, I promise you, you won't be happy with it unless you're willing to follow me. And trust me. It, it's the truth, isn't it, guys? Yes, Do you trust what I'm hearing? Do you trust me? And if you do, we're getting ready to multiply. Amen. See, people always want to come back after it happens, James. That's so true. <laughs> come on now. After the bread's done divided, man, and it's, everything's going on, and Jesus done did a miracle, everybody, woo everybody wants to get on board then. Amen. But are you willing to get on board when he's asking you for your lunch? Sometimes God's asking you for your lunch. Yeah. Are you willing to get on board now? while he's asking you for your lunch. God's moving here. How many of you are with me in here? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. Yes, he is. Come on. Give him praise and glory. Yes, God. Oh, we, we, I tell you what, we need more than that now. Get up on your feet. Get up on your feet. Father God, I thank you, Lord God. For the gift of multiplication, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you are moving amongst us. And that you are bringing people into us. That you are adding to us, Lord God, weekly. Those who would be saved. Those who would come with us. Who, those who would help shoulder the responsibilities, Lord. We thank you for the giftings that you have placed in this body, Lord. That you have us, Lord God. You have blessed us with giftings, Lord, for a move. You have blessed us, Lord God, with our giftings. With giftings in our body, Lord God. With giftings to the right people at the right time to see a great move of God. Oh, Lord God, I see it in my mind's eye. I see it in my spirit, Lord, that there is a move going on, Father God. I thank you for that, Lord. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that there will be single people that will meet their mate, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, they're going to have they're going to have a blessing. They're going to have a relationship in their life. Because when God moves, people get blessed. Oh, Lord God, there's going to be people with jobs that didn't have that kind of job before. Because when God moves, people get blessed. Oh, there's going to be people that haven't been healed. And they're going to get healed up. Because when God moves, people get blessed. People get blessed in the power of God. When God's moving, people get blessed. 
People yeah. get changed. Oh, That's he'll right. change your family tree in the name of Jesus. He'll reverse that family curse. He'll break it down and destroy it in the name of Jesus. When he moves, people get blessed. Come on, people. When God moves, people get blessed. Ooh, there's people in here struggling with addiction. God says, when I move, you will get blessed. Oh, you're coming up out of the addiction. You're coming up out of it. Oh, Lord, the Lord is excellent. He said you may have been chronic in your life. Oh, but He is good about the chronic. He'll, he'll heal a chronic. He can heal somebody that's been chronically in it. He ain't worried about the chronic. He's going to heal you. He is the God that heals the chronic diseases. He is the God that puts His hand on you and calls things that are not as though they were. He is bringing things to pass. He is, he is embarrassing those who call themselves wise. He is the God that brings things to pass. He blesses you in the midst of it. God is good. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. God is good. Amen. Jesus. Jesus, we only begun to see what you're going to do. Yes, Father God, you may lead us right there beside you know the Red Sea, Lord God, but you are the God that makes a way. Yes. You're the way maker. Yes, Lord. Lord God, we thank you that you are the way maker. You always make a way towards your promise, Lord. You make a way, Lord God, where there seems to be no way for your promises to come to pass, Father. I thank you for that, Jesus. And, oh, I bless your name, Father. People, uh, will you come on up, Jerry, and just start playing? You know, there's people in here that uh, today I just really believe in my heart. I always give people a chance to give their life to the Lord. Because I, had, I gave my life to the Lord at one point. 